Alright guys, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to easily get to Minmus uh, without glitches, just like my other video. Uh, really easy to fly a rocket, it's uh, also easy to build. Um, so basically what you want to start out with is the 5 seater um, crew cab uh, and then put a bunch of um, drogue chutes on the side and then a few normal parachutes as well as well as the big main parachute on top and then put a heat shield now i know as i mentioned in one of my other videos that um kerbal space program 2 does not yet have heating uh, re uh atmospheric re-entry heating um, but it is a good idea to get into the habit of putting heat shields on as uh because when you when they add heating um it's probably better because you're gonna be so used to not putting them on they're just gonna forget and it's gonna be a pain uh and then so the design that we're going for here is um pretty easy just three legs uh you can do four if you want i just did three because uh, i think it looks cooler um but four will definitely be more stable now in the beginning versions of the game these which were the large landing legs were actually really unstable and they would always like break but i think they've been patched because in my experience they just uh, they work really well now uh, and then we use the poodle engine on the bottom because it has a nice uh, mix of efficiency and vacuum and uh, thrust so it can get us uh, wherever we want quickly without using too much fuel which is always a need when you're in uh, Kerbal Space Program 2. Uh, now I am making this rocket a bit more colorful than all of my last ones. I did set the agency color to be blue and uh, blue and white but I didn't end up liking that so much, so I changed to red and white like I did for my Duna mission because that is always a really good combo. Um, now, I did take out that solid rocket booster because I um, wanted to make, uh, I think it was called uh, the, it wasn't the Artemis, it was, um, it was, so it was supposed to be the replacer for the space shuttle, uh, and then they, it was just a solid rocket booster, and then just the Orion crew capsule on top, uh, but then they decided not to do that, it was a space shuttle rocket booster. Um, but this is also, um, I decided to go against that because A, we don't have enough thrust, and B, this is just simpler to uh, fly, because it won't just spin out of control because it has a gimbal and stuff. But yeah, we're also going to do a coral of cross, because while making this, uh, the challenge uh, posted by the devs for the AZ2 was uh, to make a Coral of Cross mission, so I'm like, okay, why not? Uh, Coral of Cross is um, what the Soyuz, the Russian Soyuz rocket uses, and it's um, when, I, will sh I mean, I'll show you when they separate, um, but it's when the boosters fall apart or fall off the rocket once they're used um, in a specific pattern. Now, usually they are, um, those boosters are liquid fuel, but we're going to use solid fuel just because it's easier here for our purposes. And yeah, we're going to use uh, large tanks, uh, and then um, make sure that you're going to use, um, let's see, because I went through a couple of iterations to see which engine works the best, and then um, I decided on, let's see which one I decided on. I'm pretty sure there was... Yes, it was that one. Um, I'm sure that's the Rhino, it might be. Um, but, yeah. So, just make sure that you're using all the same parts. And make sure you're strutting everything together. Because, make sure you strut the bottom, the first stage, to the second stage. And, yep, like the boosters. Solid rocket boosters to the um, second stage. Because that will stop it from wobbling. And just makes this rocket really easy to fly. Okay, so now we are on the launch pad with our four solid rocket boosters and our one massive engine. And then here we are taking off. Uh, now, like I said before, this rocket is really easy to fly because if you strut everything like I did in the build, um, if, you, if it did go too fast for you, you can just slow it down a little bit via YouTube. So, slow down mechanic, it's like you hit the settings button and then there's playback speed. And 
you can change the playback speed um, and so yeah really really pretty rocket I think it's really nice and clean uh, obviously no fairings this is a girl space program too um, and one also you never put fairings but yeah so now we're flying to Minmus um, just make sure that you're doing a gradual turn um, I do not have the UI up here because I wanted to make the uh, the video look a bit better but if you do have the UI up make sure you get up to like 150 to 200 meters per second and then also that you are um, getting like 9,000 to like 13,000 meters okay so here's the core left cross see that pattern where the rockets or the boosters fly off like that that is a core left cross but yeah um to fly this rocket really really simple just go up at like 10,000 meters uh, start turning banking right like this yep and then uh, just keep banking right uh, just full throttle all the way there uh won't won't spin out it's really really stable um and then um, the nice thing is that because i went through a few iterations while testing this rocket um i ended up putting to make it really easy i ended up putting a high thrust uh inefficient engine on the second stage which is this one uh and although it is inefficient uh it is high thrust and, it act, and it's really easy to fly like all the other ones you had to be like super accurate like you had to be at the exact right angle exact right amount of thrust and then you would just barely make it into orbit and uh it was stressful and um no one wants to have a stressful gaming experience so here you go just use um as uh, this one person from top gear once said uh more power yeah just make sure you're using more power um you can always pack a little bit more fuel uh you will not regret adding more power as it will just make your life so much easier but yeah once you're building search for the engine that has the um three like balls they look like the bottom propellant balls um just make sure that you're searching for those like see how high our trajectory is um with the other ones it would be really low it would, it would end up at like 80,000, and then you'd hit it and then um, it'd be really hard to get into orbit but here it is really really simple okay um and so uh if you guys have any comments or suggestions of like what videos i should do next um like i want to do uh, a space shuttle video but it's like i want to make it different because um, there was a design for the space shuttle where I actually sat on top of a rocket uh, instead of bolted to the side so I'm thinking about doing that instead um, and then if you didn't know back to the video um, there is a warp to maneuver node function uh, and that is uh, one of the best I think additions that they have um, installed in the game uh, there wasn't really a clear warp to maneuver in Kerbal Space Program 1, but here it's just um, if you open up the UI and the, on the maneuver node, the one that's like in the center bottom of your screen, there's the um, top left of that box, yep, as you can see in the bottom there's the one with three arrows, uh, three green arrows, if you just click that it will time warp you to 30 seconds away from the maneuver node and then uh, if you click it again after you get to 30 seconds of time warp you to I think 15 or 10 um, and from that point you probably shouldn't click it again because it will just time warp you to zero and then you probably won't be lined up uh, because uh, which is I find interesting but um, the game doesn't really I guess it's realistic but time warp isn't realistic so but i feel like it would be just be much easier if the game just you know kept you or like if you selected pro grade or if you like on sas and or you selected um maneuver node and you were pointing in that direction if you time warped it'd be really nice if the game kept you pointing in that direction like along as you were warping forward um, okay, so I skipped a pretty important part here. Uh, to actually get to Minmus, um, there is, um, they will show up, when you set Minmus as your target, they will show up two, like, things. It's like, um, I think they're labeled, like, DN and AP. Uh, not AP, but, um, one of them is labeled DN and 
the I forget what the other one is labeled. But basically, you want to make your maneuver node to minimus around that point because um, that will show you. Uh, yep. So there's dn in the top uh, right uh, of the screen on the trajectory, uh, and those lines symbolize like that that would be the best area to get to Minmus uh, because Minmus's orbit is actually not flat it is it has a certain angle to it um, and those lines symbolize where in the orbit it is actually flat as compared to Kerbin's orbit uh, or just your orbit orbit if you're in an equatorial orbit around Kerbin those lines is what are what symbolize the um, where the angle is the same because otherwise the if you go when it's either on the really low end or on the really high end it's kind of hard to get into its sphere of influence because it is a really small celestial body and um, it's hard to get into uh, its sphere of influence if yeah, like as you can see right there if you paused um, you would have seen that the tilt uh, and so because of the tilt it's hard to get to the um, it's hard to get into its sphere of influence but yeah really easy uh, this ship has way more than enough fuel to get you to um, Minmus and back it actually has enough fuel if you wanted to uh, you could swing by and land on the Mun uh, which is Kerbin's first moon and then so land on the Mun uh, and then get back from the Mun uh, I that's actually a pretty interesting challenge. I was thinking about doing that myself, uh, but I have a few other videos lined up before I can do that, such as the, uh, I wanna go to Jewel, I want to make the interesting, um, I wanna make the Air the Aries, that's what it was called. I uh, remember in the beginning of the video, <clears throat> I mentioned uh, that the replacement, or the Na NASA's replacement for the space shuttle was supposed to be a rocket called Ares, and basically what it was, was um, uh, it was a <clears throat> space shuttle, it was a space shuttle solid rocket booster, and then there was a second stage, a liquid second, second stage, and then there was a crew capsule on top. Uh, they only ever launched it once, I mean it worked pretty well, and then they just decided not to, they cut funding, and then they went into the commercial crew program, which is, um, they just rent places from SpaceX. Now, if you don't know, every planet uh, in the game has its own, like, music for everything. So like Kerbin, Duna, Minmus, Mun, uh, even though they're not planets, they're moons, they all have their own, like, when you enter the sphere of influence, when you're far from it, they have their own um, like orbit music. Uh, so they have their own orbit music. They have uh, their own ground music. Uh, unfortunately, if you're orbiting close, I mean, just look how uh, nice the the ground surface looks. But if you're orbiting close to the um, surface it thinks that you're gonna land and it turns on the landing music and the landing music is the same for uh, everything so if you um, want to experience all of the like different planets and moons uh, musics uh, because they're all different because if you like if you go into outer space and then you go uh, enter Kerbin's sphere of influence the music changes and that's Kerbin's orbit music. If you go or into the Mun's sphere of influence, that uh, the music changes from Kerbin's to the Mun's, and the Mun's is different than Minmus's, and Minmus's is different. So every, everything has its own music, and I really, really like that. Uh, and Minmus's music is actually one of my favorites. Um, I also like the Kerbin's is, um, I don't know, I think they just kind of took it from last game, and uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, because um, they kept the aesthetic of the game um, by keeping the music in my opinion I like that but I also don't really like that because all the other places have such great music and then there's just the same old for uh, Kerbin which is in my opinion I feel like they could have revamped it a little bit which I think they did but they could have revamped it for more okay so now that we have uh, circularized around 
Minmus. Um, we are going to time warp to uh, a good spot. Now, as a first time, um, I will explain as we get closer to the um, making them the maneuver node for landing, but uh, Minmus is really famous for its flats. Um, these are ice flats that are, well, in the previous game, they were always flat, but as you will see here, they aren't necessarily flat in KSP2, which I find really cool, but they are still the flattest place that you can land, which is um, those, as you can see, most of it is like a grayish white color. That's supposed to be snow. And then the rest of the, it, like there are patches of like ice, those are the flats. And that's where you want to land on your first uh, journey to Minmus because uh, if you land there, it is really flat. It's also really forgiving because if you touch down and like bounce, um, you won't immediately hit a rock. And so what you might have to do is you might have to make a maneuver note like I am here, um, pulling radio in and radio out depending on where you are or which flat you want to land into to incline your orbit so you actually fly over the uh, flat because it is... There, I think there's one flat that actually intersects equatorial and it's like just the tiniest edge of it um, and all the other ones are like above or below the equator so if you're in an equatorial orbit um, it's pretty hard to land on a flat without having to tilt your um, without having to tilt your orbit. But tilting your orbit is really easy as like I said just make a maneuver node and just pull on the triangles depending on if you want to go up or down and then there you go you have your orbit um, to land. Uh, when you want to land make sure that your trajectory goes um, a little bit like a good distance beyond where you actually want to land so like as you could see my predicted landing spot would is actually not in the flats it's in one of the like the snow hills biome um, and so the reason I did that is because to slow down you're gonna start burning uh, and when you're gonna start burning uh, it actually like brings your landing spot closer so the farther away your um, so if you want to land specifically somewhere just make sure that you are um, you your trajectory points that you're not actually gonna land there you need to be a bit beyond uh, and here I accidentally paused the game uh, and then I am just looking around thinking um, yep always make sure you're saving um, and unless you're hardcore and you want to do no saves but Saving is highly recommended because although they have patched out a bunch of um, a bunch of the glitches and for now it is uh, really nice to play, it's still iffy. Like it still does randomly disassemble your craft for no reason. Uh, it does still just decide to merge you through the ground once in a while. So make sure you're just F5ing frequently. Uh, or you can actually go into the escape save game menu and then you can actually name your saves which is really nice, um, especially for me because then I can then go back and like take screenshots or take music capture and stuff like that. Uh, as you can see what I was mentioning before that the, the flats aren't flat anymore is that all these cracks in the ice that you can see they actually exist now like they're corporeal before uh, in KSP1 the cracks existed like you could sort of see them from space but then they were just flat they were just tech like color differences they weren't actually corporeal here I'll take a Kerbal out to look at them and it was uh, it, I was pleasantly surprised that they were actually corporeal. Okay, and so um, uh, in hindsight, I probably should have sped up the landing a little bit. Uh, please let me know, like in the comments, uh, if the landing should be sped up or because this is um, real speed, and I just feel like the the thing with desyncing is that the music in Curl Space Program Two is um, like ambient or like adaptive and so the like if you start landing like it gets louder uh, and 
but if you like stop landing or like something happens it can get quieter and stuff like that and then also there's the engine noise so the problem with speeding up is that you would either have to cut like specifically record engine noise and then put it in or you would have to uh, just completely remove engine noise um, and I don't really want to do that um, because the whole point is that uh, engine noise is cool and so um, so that's why I don't really want to speed up the landings but um, looking at watching the video back right now as I'm recording the audio because I'm recording the audio in post is um, probably speeding up is not a bad thing i mean this mission took me with like recordings and going back and uh non sped up it took me two hours to build get there uh get back um i had to reload one save because um nothing glitched um it was just uh i will actually tell you when we get there um if i remember but one of the some of the kerbals something happened with the kerbals uh so make sure you stay tuned to figure out what happened to the kerbals uh but yeah the that's the problem with speeding up with dynamic music that's i think what it's actually called it's dynamic music uh is that the when you speed up the dynamic music doesn't fit the action and so the only other way to avoid that is to keep it like real speed and this is real speed and real speed is slightly slow so if you want me to keep speeding it up just let me know if you want me to keep having it real speed. Um, also let me know. Um, so yeah, we have landed, uh, and this is why I would suggest doing the the four landing legs because three looks cool, but it's also pretty unstable, um, especially with these landing legs. So um, I would just do four if you're not super confident with your landing abilities just do four it will save you a bunch of time and effort because here you have to like land on one or on two and then it like falls back on one there you land on two or on all four and then you land um so you land on two and then it falls on two so yeah i just got all my kerbals out uh, now you may have noticed that during the build i did not add a ladder that is because min misses gravity is so low that you honestly could just jump up and grab onto the um, capsule like it's that low uh, also their um, RCS packs work so if you want you can fly around and so yeah here is our Minmus uh, flag as is accustomed to any part of a KSP landing mission is to put the flag somewhere uh, what I really like is that you can hear the footprints um, as they're walking like you can hear the snow crunch or you can hear the ice clip clop um, but the problem with that is that uh, there's no air in space, so technically you're not supposed to be able to hear the snow crunch. Um, but yeah, this is me flying to um, the ice flat itself because I landed like on I landed in the snow biome, and this is the actual ice flat where it becomes ice. Uh, and this is where I discovered that the cracks in the ice or the divots in the ice are actually corporeal. And this is what made me um, really happy because uh, it just adds such a cool feature to the game. Um, because, and like before, you would just stand, like, it was completely flat. Like, the, the textures, you would see that they were they would bend and flow like this, but you actually couldn't walk on it. Like in the early days of KSP2, they would just be like a flat box on top, and then you would just walk on the flat box. But now you can actually walk through, up, down on all these uh, divots, and I think that's really cool. So when you're landing on the flats, because the flats are still the easiest place to land, uh, make sure you're avoiding um, all these cracky places just go to a place without um i mean they're flats they're big in the cracks um there's like one big crack that like runs along as you can see it just runs uh if you go to the left or the right of that um honestly it's going to be super flat or you can do what i did and then just go a little bit um to out from the edge 
and uh, you can land in the snow biome that's on the edge of the flat and the, uh, and the snow biome doesn't have any like divots or trenches in it and so um, you can just land there and it's perfectly flat so landing on Minmus uh, flats avoiding the cracks because they're corporeal now um, and on the edge or on the edge in the snow biomes um, once you get feel a little bit better you can start landing in places like this which is um, a mountain uh, and this is I took Bob Kerman out for a little flight to the mountains uh, because I wanted to plant a flag and then I'm gonna name the site name I climbed a mountain and then the flag text will be uh, I was here dash Bob uh, and this is the interesting thing that actually happened is because on the way back I am going to run out of mono propellant, so I'm going to have to walk. In the walk, I did time this. It took me about 12 minutes to walk because I landed quite far from the um, Kerbal, from the Kerbals. Uh, and then when I actually got there, I saw that the other Kerbals that were just standing next to the flag despawned. Uh, so yeah, that was a bit of an issue. So I had to reload. Um, I had to reload a quick save to before Bob went to uh, climb the mountain, and he actually didn't get to climb the mountain, uh, and so it was all just an acid dream, fear dream. Uh, but yeah, now we're taking off. As you can see, the um, the Kerbin. I was gonna say the star, the sun, but no. Uh, our home planet Kerbin has risen up over the horizon of Minmus and it is a pretty small but I mean it's still honestly this game looks fantastic it's fabulous like even there's suit there were super realistic uh, texture packs for KSP one and I feel like they are like worse than this not because this is more realistic but because those texture packs made the game like really realistic but ksp2 manages to get the sense of like arcadeness and um get the sense of arcadeness and the sense of uh, realism like together in one and just blends it really really well and that is what i really like about this game is just that the texture pack is or the textures and the planet surfaces are all super detailed and like super nice and corporeal now like i mentioned with the like the divots in the ice flats but it's not so realistic like uh in that mod pack you would just um there'd be rocks and then like every rock was corporeal and then there would be like divots and all the divots were corporeal and you needed like a massive computer to run it and it was just it was a nightmare and then this combination of arcadiness and realism is just perfect okay and so now um, just again don't worry about um, I mean I did it here because it was a bit easier for me uh, but don't worry about necessarily going into an equatorial orbit around Minmus after you've landed because <clears throat> like immediately launching into an equatorial orbit because you probably won't be able to uh, if you really want to get an equatorial orbit though what you can do is you can launch and then you can um, you can launch and then you can adjust radio in radio out where the triangles just pull them and then you can make your orbit equatorial and the reason usually it costs like thousands of delta v if you're around like a big planet or celestial body such as I know, the sun or tuna or Kerbin or like Eve, it would cost a lot of delta V, but here it doesn't because Minmus's gravity well is so small, it, it would take maximum like 200 to fully um, flip your orbit. So, yeah. Uh, and then the one downside is that um, coming back from Minmus, you are going to be entering probably in a polar orbit around. Uh, around Kerbin, I mean that's not bad. You get to see the poles and stuff. But um, if you want to um, play around with the maneuver node, you can. You can make it so you enter on the equatorial side. Um, but otherwise, again, really, really simple mission. Um, it's really. 
I honestly have so much fun on the uh, surfaces of the planet. Uh, and it's really annoying when um, it, it's just hard to get to the planet. Like you spend so much time and effort trying to get there because the craft is unbalanced or because of, like if it's this game is like wiggly and always falls apart. It's really nice to have um, designs like this where you can just just go like and not think about it just full throttle um, and then it doesn't fall apart on you because it's built correctly and it's simple so you don't there's not a million stages and a million things to toggle um, I do get that that's fun like if you're making an SSTO like that's a difficult challenge but it's not a like a pleasant experience like I wouldn't necessarily do it all the time um, I would, again, it would make a nice challenge, but for just a normal relaxing Kerbal Space Program to experience, this is what you want. You want a simple rocket that doesn't fall apart, that will land you, won't bounce. I mean, it will probably bounce because it's minimus, but um, it can. You have more than enough fuel. I mean, if you wanted to, I mean, you saw I still have over like 3,000 meters per second left of delta B. I could have went to the Mun from Minmus, land there, walked around there, and then taken off, got back home from the month. So I could have gone to two at once. And there you go, you have your two missions. Uh, so yeah, I was landing now, and then I realized that uh, there, I was landing in the mountains. So yes, that uh, kind of scared me. But then um, the nice thing about the parachutes is that they're set to open uh, a thousand meters above the ground. Um, because before, in the early Caribbean Space Program 2 and Caribbean Space Program 1, it was set to or open 1,000 feet or meters above sea level. So if you were in the mountains, you would have just crashed. So if you, um, now they changed it to ground. And the fact that it's in ground, uh, it's really nice. And so the wind on the mountains was actually kept blowing my uh, parachutes open. So I had to... Um, go in and manually cut all of them but yeah if you enjoyed this video make sure uh you subscribe to my channel as more curl space program content is coming out soon along with flight simulator uh and a bunch of games that i'm gonna be working on and so yeah have a great rest of your day guys thank you for watching